Just take the whole, the whole thing and put it in, yeah. into the pocket somewhere. Herzlich willkommen zu unserer ersten Ausgabe von der Stammtischgondel hier in der Hohen Mutbahn. Bei mir ein ganz spezieller Abenteuer, Dr. Bertrand Picard. Hallo. Hallo. Grüß Gott. Willkommen hier zu uns. Freut mich hier zu sein. Obergogel. Wunderbar Platz. Danke sehr. Congratulations to your successful uh, world on the solar plane. Uh, what was the uh, most exciting moment in this uh, solar impulse project? I think it's the moment where I could speak to the Secretary General of the United Nations during Earth Day on 22nd yeah. of April last year uh, when I was in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> really? And Ban Ki moon was with 175 heads of state signing the Paris Agreement. Yeah. And I could speak from a solar airplane flying day and night with no fuel, yeah. explaining about the clean technology revolution. Awesome, awesome. So lucky, lucky you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> It's an honor to talk to you. And because of your achievements, uh, you're traveling uh, around the world and you're one of the most uh, asked speakers in the present and, uh, and today now. Um, in 1931, your grandfather uh, made a crash landing here on the Obergogel Glacier. Was it a reason for you to follow his footprints to go uh, on a project like this, to go on, on, on a world round trip in a, in a balloon? Because you're the first person, uh, the, the first man on, on the planet who made a round the world trip in one go around the world in a balloon. Yes, it was an inspiration because my grandfather always combined scientific exploration with protection of the environment. Yeah. When he was flying in the stratosphere for the first time ever in 1931, the goal was to show that it was possible to fly in thinner air above bad weather where the resistance would be smaller and therefore less use yeah. for fuel. So it was a way to save energy. It ah. was already an environmental concern. Yeah. And then my grandfather wrote an article, big article in 1942 about the need to replace oil by solar energy. Yeah. So you see it was already in the heart of my ancestors, well, yeah. it was like going to the moon. Yes. And when uh, my grandfather wanted to fly to the stratosphere, people said he was, he was yeah. going to die, it was impossible. Yeah. And actually not only he did it, but he did it twice, and it yeah. was a huge success. It opened the way to modern aviation. Yeah. But it's true that when he landed on a glacier in Oberburgel, yeah. that was really scary because it was the middle of the night. Nobody knows. There was a technical problem in the gas valve, yeah. so he had only one chance for the landing. Yeah. If he missed the landing, he would go back up <laughs> and spend another day yeah. in the stratosphere and had no, not enough oxygen. Yeah. You know, the pioneers in the beginning, when they do things, it seems impossible. Yeah. It's very difficult. And then they open the way, and now it seems normal. Now yeah. everybody goes with an airplane in the stratosphere higher, yeah. to travel for for uh, holidays. I, I just, just heard it from, from my grandmother. She, she said when she was a young girl, um, she, she saw him flying up here and she said, that's a golden, a golden um, ball coming here. Nobody kn knows about. And they, they landed on, on, on the glass here. And finally they said, okay, I think we should have a look on that. Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it happened something in there. Um, For this last big adventure in the 20th century, you had from the balloon, uh, as a balloonist, um, you needed three tries. Yes. Was it difficult to get any supporters or sponsors for that project? The all, project all, all, like all, this. All, all, the, all the team believe in this, yeah, you know, in the this success. In a project like this, you don't have sponsors, you have yeah. partners, yeah. which is very different. They It try is, yes. to reach the impossible yeah. with you. They are not just paying for you to make a dream come yeah. true. So uh, it was Breitling, the watch company, yeah. and they supported me very loyally all the time because it became our project. Yeah. They wanted to succeed as much as me. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 and, and I think it's a it's a it's a long uh, term ongoing yeah, work exactly. since since years. I think that you know if you want to break a world record, you can have a sponsor. Yeah. And you just do a little bit better than the previous guy. Yeah. But this has nothing to do with the first. No, you, you the, are first, the first. 
yeah. you you set the benchmark. Nobody yeah. did it before. You're not breaking a record. You're just yeah. opening a new way. Yeah. And of course, you need other type of people to support you. Yeah. You need people who have a pioneering spirit, not only people who want to yeah. have their name somewhere. Um, your, adventure uh, your adventure family attends that nothing is impossible. So you established the Winds of Hope Foundation. Mm. It supports children with a very rare disease called uh, Noma. Could you tell us a little bit more about wha it's what's it that nobody knows about? It's not a rare disease, Noma. It's a disease that touches hundreds of thousands of children, but it's a neglected disease. Okay. Because it's in very poor countries where nobody yeah. cares. Yeah. And this is the, the disaster. That's okay. a drama. Um, because of lack of food, yeah. you have a decrease in the immune response and the bacteria of the mouth start to yeah. attack the face. Yeah. And you have children between two and six years old, they have no face. It's just a big hole and this is yeah. only for the one who survived, the others died. Yeah. So with the Winds of Hope Foundation, I'm funding projects, I raise funds and I fund the project with this money yeah. to prevent that sickness, to recognize the children who are sick early enough to be able to save them. What is difficult is that a lot of these very poor countries yeah. are now in the regions where you have a lot of terrorism, yeah. like Mali, yeah, so like nobody Niger, goes there, Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. So it starts to be difficult to go and help these children yeah. because the situation, political situations, is crazy. Yeah. May I go to another private uh, questions to your life? You have uh, three daughters. Uh, can we read in the future maybe the, the newspaper headlines Miss Picard is the first person on Mars or are your children going uh, in, into completely other goals? I do, do they follow the fathers and grandfathers? And I think the goal today is not so much to explore new territories or new planets. The goal is to improve quality of life on Earth. Yeah. And you have so much to do to fight poverty, promote human rights, have a better governance more education, renewable energies, sustainable development, protection of the environment. This is really important. Yeah. And I hope my children will contribute in this this way. Okay. Thank you for <laughs> for, for, for these ideas. I think it's a good sentence to, to, to save our environment. Um, and have better quality of life. You know, yes. the governance on this planet starts to be really bad. Yeah. The governance are just making management instead of, instead of making leadership. Yeah. They don't explain to the population about big visions yeah. and how to reach these big visions. There is no more common project. Yeah. It's only little details and people fighting for little details. This is what this is not how we should. So what do you think lead about all these what, what especially what we are doing here in tourism? Uh, what do you think about these uh, uh, machines no factories here? I think it's very good. I, you know, I Go think he, he, the ecologists yeah. are losing a lot of time yeah. fighting against little details yeah. like artificial snow or cable cars yeah. instead of fighting against the real big problems, yeah. uh, which is climate change, air pollution, depletion of natural resources. Yeah. And it's a, it's a big mistake that the green parties are doing because they irritate a lot of people. And now, when you have ecologists who come and promote renewable energies, people say, oh, we don't want you anymore. No, you are just yeah. destroying the economy. You're just destroying tourism. You're yeah. just a hassle for the population. Yeah. And uh, they made a big mistake. I think today we have to get ecology in every party, not just in the Green Party. And the ecology today is about replacing the old polluting devices like combustion engine, like incandescent light bulbs, old systems of heating and cooling, yeah. old systems of distributing the energy. All this should be replaced by new clean technologies, renewable energy. This is a, a, a common program yeah. that a country could have. And this is where the ecologists should, should fight. Not, not to be a hassle of an annoying the people who want to come in the mountain for skiing, because this is not yeah. polluting. Yeah. If you take some water from not a river, to make artificial snow, anyway, yeah. the water will go back to the river. Anyway, so, so, so it's uh, half a year later. So. And if you say that the new cable car is yeah. destroying nature, it's ridiculous. It's not destroying nature. You you just see it, and who's yeah. seeing it? Only people coming for ski. Yes. So that's what we are living here. 
So that's exactly. Yeah. So it's very important to understand that today you have to reconcile ecology and economy. Yeah. You have to use ecology to create jobs, not to destroy jobs. Yeah. And all the clean technologies, it's a new market today. Yeah. Electric cars, LED yeah. lamps, heat pumps, smart grid. All this is what we need. All this is what we need to have a better quality of life. Yeah. And it creates jobs and it makes profit. So, so that's, that's how it is. And, and thank you that you see it like, like, like uh, some, some uh, lots of professional uh, economists see it. Um, this is a place where, where I really like this, one of my, my, my best feeling places in, in, in the world. Where is your place where you feel very, very good? I like, well, there are several countries I like very much. I love Myanmar. Yeah. Myanmar with all the Buddhist temple, all these Buddhist priests everywhere. It's, it's really a peaceful country. It's beautiful. Now also, I, I love to be in the mountains. I love skiing. I love to fly. Yeah. <laughs> I would say yeah. the, the last place where I felt so well, that was in Solar Impulse. Yeah. You fly, you don't know no noise, get, uh, no pollution. Yeah. You look at the sun, you look at your four propellers turning, and you know it turns only because of the sun. And yeah. you fly day and night, and you do better without fuel than with fuel. Super. And I felt so well. That's great. That's really great to hear. So, um, what does the day in Dr. Bertrand Picard's life look like? It's a completely erratic program. Nothing is the same from a day to another. Yeah. I'm traveling in different places. Sometimes I give speeches like, like here for a medical congress. Sometimes it's for a corporation or a bank or an insurance. Sometimes it's for ministers, yeah. energy minister, environmental minister, foreign affairs ministers or governments or institutions or foundations or United Nations. It's a lot of of botschaft yeah. <laughs> for for the uh, renewable energies and clean technologies. Um, is there any person which you really want to meet, to drink a coffee, and what would you talk with him or her about? Today I would like to meet Mr. Trump. <laughs> yes. To explain that if he wants to make America great again, he will need to use renewable energies and clean technologies. Because this is the way to stimulate growth. Yeah. You cannot have growth today by continuing to sell old, outdated systems that are polluting. Yeah. A lot of people don't want that anymore. So if you want to sell something more, you have to make it better, more energy efficient. Yeah. And you can have a clean growth that would be cleaner than the dirty situation we have today. So this is the way to make profit and stimulate the uh, creation of jobs. And. Uh My, my last question to you, um, which impressions do you have from Obergogel Hofgold, where you have been now here for, for the very first time, which you maybe know just about uh, stories and hearings from your crash landing from your grandfather. What do you think about this area, which he makes great? Yes, I heard that all the tourism started after yes. the landing of, of my grandfather. Because all the, all, all the journalists and all the newspapers came yes. up to Obergogel, so there was just a small footpath coming yes. up to Obergogel. Yes, so this was a two-day travel from uh, uh, <laughs> up, up well, to Obergogel. I'm happy my grandfather could promote such a beautiful place. Yeah. Look at that, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Huh? So next time I come with my skis, that's for sure. Yes, sure. yes, please. But but in the Stammtisch, God, we don't talk about skiing. Enough. Everything else except skiing. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the idea behind. I flew above the glacier with a helicopter yeah. this morning and saw the precise place where my grandfather yeah. landed. That was very moving for me. It was almost like if he was still here. Yeah. Because I heard so much about this place. My father was always telling me uh, how how important it had been and how difficult the landing was yeah. and what impact it made in the world. And in 81, there was the 50th anniversary of the landing. And I was in the hospital because I broke my arm with a hang glider. Yeah. And I couldn't come and I was so sad. Yeah. So now it's really the, the best possible yes. <laughs> way to, to come back. And people are so friendly. Why, why not? If, if, if you could make it possible, why not? Yeah. It's, it's that easy to make people happy. Um, I have a, a guest book here with me and uh, 
I would ask you to to write me uh, something in there by on the on the way down, and uh, would it be possible to write me a name into this book? The name. Who would you think about who should sit here next? Oh. Super. Dr. Bertrand Picard, thank you for talking to me. With pleasure, Emmanuel. Thank you. All the best for your ongoing ideas. Thank you. And I'm sure to, <laughs> to, to hear soon again from you. Thank you. I'm sure I will, I will come back here with the family. Yes, please. <laughs>